Scientology, this is something you might remember we spent a couple of weeks covering uh, last year. Scientology, religion or cult, whatever you uh, think of it yourself. Lots of people with different opinions on it. And of course, we had our own very own local clash um, with the head of the Scientology organisation in Ireland uh, last year when they falsely used a filmed interview at Ocean FM for viewing at an annual conference of the organisation in Florida, an end-of-year conference, except that the interview in Ocean FM never took place. Uh, the studio used was not an Ocean FM studio and the personnel used in the filming were, were fake. And what we have done in the past year in Ireland is we've got out 100,000 of these little booklets that tell the truth about drugs. Well, what, like do about mean, what do you mean a, re- a reenactment? So you, you falsely created a studio situation, is that right? A studio which doesn't exist, not that we know of anyway. Well, it did actually exist because that interview but it's not was the ocean, done. But it's not the Ocean FM studio, Sabrina. No, it's not. It was a reenactment and the people that were actually at the event are aware that it was a reenactment. No, they the are video not. No, they are, actually, no, they are, no, they, no, they, are, they are not aware. The one thing that I came across when we, when we covered that last year was the um, the interest and the curiosity there is with, with Scientology and indeed the amount of people in this region who were members or indeed who are members. Uh, still, John Sweeney is our next guest on the show. John is a journalist, a British journalist, n- well known for uh, extensive work right throughout the world. But um, I'm sure he'll forgive me for saying this. He, he's known probably best of all for a BBC documentary on Panorama that he was involved in eight years ago called Scientology and Me. Uh, John's in Dublin this weekend to give a talk at an anti-Scientology conference called Scientology Enough is Enough. John, good morning. Thanks uh, for joining us this morning. Good morning, now. Um, what's the conference all about, tell us, first of all? Um, uh, can I make a confession? You can. Uh, so, <laughs> I know it's confession on the radio, which is slightly different. Uh, some men play golf, some men have model railway sets. My hobby is annoying the Church of Scientology. <laughs> Which, which, must, so anyway. which must take up a, a lot a lot of your time. Um, they, tried to, they tried to shut me up, Niall, and it's a bit like I, I hadn't heard uh, the story of, the, of them uh, recreating and actually fabricating an Ocean FM um, oh, interview, yeah. which it, didn't really exist. No, but that's you, the, you can check it out on social media later, John. It's, it's, yeah, no, it's, no, no, it's I, a good one. Not, not quite as dramatic as your Panorama programme, but it's a good one all the same. There are 7 Um, billion people on this planet. Uh, You don't have to convince me that the Church of Scientology isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Let's be fair. They say that I am uh, a bigot, psychotic and a liar. A Scientology blogger has said that I'm genuinely evil. Uh, For my part, I've done two documentaries and written a book called Church of Fear. And essentially the conclusion is this is not a religion. It's a cult. OK, but why why should people believe uh, John Sweeney? I mean, if you say it, it's, it's now become almost an, an obsession. Why, why why believe someone like John Sweeney? Um, it's ex-Scientologists, people who've been in the church, are my witnesses. And and they say, um, they say for example, I don't, I don't know if, if you, have, whether you're going to play uh, your listeners, me shouting at them. Well, well um, I, I'm, 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 I'm so predictable. I was going to. Well, I'll well, play that no, now. No, no, you we'll, should we'll, do. All right, well, do play you want to play it now? It now? All right, we'll play it. Well, play it just to explain. Is, according to ex-members of the Church, this is the defining symbol of the Church of Scientology in the 21st century. There is no better thing that sums it up than Okay, this. And, and this is you, John, in that panorama uh, documentary. Yes. It, and what's happening is I'm in there. That they believe that psychiatry is inherently evil. I would say psychiatry is a flawed but honest attempt to cure the mentally ill, and that's not easy. Um, this is um, following. It's the seventh day of uh, I would say, we would say, and we filmed it, that they followed us around, they spied on us, they played tricks on us. Um, and an amazing amount of emotional, psychological pressure on me, and I crack up. Okay, and here it is. Who is on the roof No, listen to me! You are not there! At the beginning of that interview! You are not there! You did not hear or record all of the interview! Do you understand? Did you understand? You are quoting the second half of the interview! Not the first half. Okay, uh, John, it's, it's, as you say, that, that's become a defining image and a defining clip, hasn't it, in relation to 
And you can laugh. You can laugh about it now. You find it funny, do you? Looking back, or I mean, um, no. It, it's, uh, so I'm laughing out of embarrassment. Yeah. Uh, I'm laughing out of comedy and embarrassment. Yeah. Why, why are you I, embarrassed, uh, John? Uh, but, but I want to say I uh, apologise uh, then. I apologise now. I truly and honestly believe that uh, civilized civilized discourse relies on people being polite to each other. And if mm. you're in the public eye, you should strive to do that. And and being polite is part of the engine oil of democracy. So I'm sorry I lost my temper. Okay. If you watch, and it's available on YouTube, so anybody can see it, it the film's called Scientology and Me, Panorama 2007. You'll see, this, it's half an hour, and you'll see what happens. And basically, every time I interview any critic, um, Tommy Davison, a chap called Mike Rinder, and a cameraman, come along and they um, they say this these people are heretics, this guy's a sexual pervert, they are extraordinarily abusive and critical of people who disagree with them. And my simple argument with uh, the church's great Hollywood ambassadors, people like Tom Cruise and John Travolta, is this, mm. is if this thing is so good, then surely it should have big shoulders. It ought to be able to take a little bit of criticism from these kind of psychotic people like me and the uh, sexual perverts and all that sort of stuff. So why attack them? Just let them say their thing and everybody else can move on and ignore them. But this church is relentlessly critical of criticism, and I don't think that's morally or philosophically right. I believe passionately that people have a right to believe in things or nothing, and I will defend that right. So people have a right to believe in Scientology, and I'll defend that right. But equally, there is another right. People have a right to criticize, to mock, to be skeptical, and both rights need to be respected. And the problem is Scientology asserts the first right and tries to suppress the second. And that's why I'm going to Dublin this weekend. All right. OK, well, we've, we had a discussion earlier in the programme in relation to, to comments that Stephen Fry made about religion or, or, or lack of religion. So why is why is Scientology taking up so much of your time? Uh, I mean, oh, all, all religions have their faults, as we know, and, and their, their positivity <coughs> as well, the Catholic religion, Muslim religion and so forth. Why, why is Scientology different? Or do you consider it a religion at all, John, in the first place? I don't. Um, nor does the Charity Commission. There's a dispute about this. Um, uh, 2013, um, the courts in Britain cleared Scientologists to get married in one of their buildings. They call it a chapel. But that is not the critical definer of a religion in Britain. Uh, that um, judgment is made by the Charity Commission, and the Charity Commission continue to uphold the view that Scientology is not a religion. And the reason they do so is that it's not open to all, and it is not, um, and I'm summarising here, open about itself. And it's very simple. I know, because I was brought up a Catholic, I'm no longer one, I know uh, um, all about the, the Catholic Church's bad uh, record and paedophile pedoph- priests. I've been rocketed by the Taliban in Pakistan, um, uh, you know, the awful stuff the jihadis do. So all religions have, have got um, problems, grave problems on their edges. However, if you go into a church, they'll tell you about baby Jesus, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Go to a mosque, they'll tell you about the prophet. Go to a synagogue, marry a nice Jewish girl, don't eat bacon sandwiches, whatever. All of these things, that what they believe in is open. If you go into a church of Scientology, they won't tell you a secret, and this will kill you and me, but the odd thing is I've been saying it since 2007, and I'm not dead. Mm. 20, 75 million years ago, a space alien Satan called Lord Zanu brought space aliens to Earth and blew them up with hydrogen bombs inside volcanoes. And... The pesky remains or the remains of these pesky space aliens have stuck to our souls and our minds and are the cause of all humanity's ills. And that cost you around a million pounds, a million euros, um, maybe $600,000, maybe 20 years of your life. So this is a pay-as-you-go religion, and I do not believe that's right, that is um, possible. You can't have a pay-as-you-go religion. A religion must be open about itself and Scientology isn't. And what ex-members say is it's a cult. Right. I, when we when we covered this uh, just over a year ago, we were amazed, number one, by the number of people in this region, this small part of, of Ireland, who were involved or who had family members involved. 
or who had been approached or indeed had dabbled with the the concept of, of um, getting involved with Scientology. But there's a choice here. Um, you know, you don't have to go in those doors and do that little test that they, they come up with. So, no, no, people... no you, you don't have to. But the problem is, once you're in it, it's very difficult to get out. And if you've got, um, if you're a parent with a child in it, it's very difficult. And they have a policy called disconnection. So they police um, membership belief in a way that the... Now, I think maybe it's possible you could say this at the Catholic Church in Ireland in the 1950s, but it's no longer true today. Um, but they police it very heavily, and the effect is, the consequences that I know people who've got kids who've never met their grandmas because their grandmas are in Scientology and because they're... Um, um, their sons and daughters have left. They won't talk to their grandchildren. Yeah. And I cannot believe that that's right. Okay, so, I mean, is this, um, as you say, well, it's not an obsession that you have, but it's, it's your hobby. Will it, will it continue, John? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Well, no, it's, uh, there's a very simple test, and it's this. Is a Cruz, who is a great film actor and a great star, but not, I say, sensible about what this thing he, he pushes, um, and everybody knows he's the world's number one Scientologist, when Cruz goes on chat shows in Dublin, in London, in the States, nobody asks him, what about this thing that you're into, Scientology? Some people say it's dark. Is that true? Nobody asks him that question. And when somebody asks him that question, then I'll, then I'll shut up. But what's happening is, if you like, the church is saying that I'm a nutter, I'm psychotic, and I am asserting my rights as I said, to question, to mock, to criticise. Equally, I respect their right to, to believe in what they believe in, and I, and, and I would defend them for that. But at the same time, it seems fair to me, and I'm, listen, you know, nobody would publish my book, um, uh, Church of Fear. Um, so my agent published it. It sold 20,000 on, on Kindle. You won't see it in the shops. It's not, I'm not some kind of massive army or anything like that. I don't think I'm obsessive. I'm simply setting out the evidence and trying my best as a journalist to give a voice to the voiceless. And in this case, these are ex-members of the church who feel that their lives have been wrecked and their rights have been destroyed. By the way, I mean, this, this may surprise you, but yeah. I don't want to sound arrogant, but when I come to Dublin this weekend, I'll be surprised if I have to buy myself a single pint of Guinness because the number of people who used to be in the church who come up to me in pubs and say, you're the guy who lost it with Scientology, can I buy you a drink? It's, uh, honestly, it's bad for my liver. Uh, <laughs> like it, well, it, I say that. I'm not joking. It's true. I am... Um, the, the people who used to be in the church think I'm some kind of god. And I said, no, 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 you got it wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. OK, well, we're, we're, we're hoping to get a Scientology spokesperson on the programme uh, tomorrow to, to, to give their side of things, which, we, which we, we did manage to do last year. But, but just to finish, John, you're saying it's, it's not... A, you've described it as not a religion, it's a con, it's a pay-as-you-go religion, a confidence trick. Yes, yes. That's what ex-members say. And the man who created it was a bad science fiction writer, a writer, and then one day he wrote a religion. But... You know, if you look at that film, Scientology and Me, you can see for yourself. We were spied on, we were lied to, they followed us around. I ended up losing my temper, I'm sorry about that. But I don't think a church that spies and lies is a church that is worth respect. John Sweeney, thanks very much for joining us this morning, John. A very Thank good you. morning to you. That's uh, John Sweeney, who'll be speaking at that conference in Dublin at the weekend. Uh, Pete, Pete is on the line, Pete Griffiths from... You live in Ballinan, County Mayo now, Pete, isn't that right? That's right, Tommy. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> okay, well, that's a hat trick. So, um, Pete, look, John was telling, and the last time we, we talked about this uh, about a year ago, and as I say, I was just, um, I was struck by how many people locally had an involvement or had a family involvement in Scientology, yeah. including you, of course, at one stage. Do you feel as strongly about oh. it now as, as, as John Sweeney? I do feel strongly about it, I, and, and I will reiterate, people's beliefs, I, I don't care about people's beliefs, but the behaviour is, is what concerns me, and the Scientologists, I mean, Scientology itself is organised fraud, and it upsets me that people are being ripped off on a daily basis, and even worse, 
you know, so, yeah, I do feel strongly about it still. All right, and, and what, 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 what makes you and John Sweeney, we heard how passionate John Sweeney was earlier and how it has really become almost an obsession with him to, to spread the <laughs> word. Uh, uh, yeah, you could say I was slightly obsessed, I guess. Um, it's, it's the injustices that go on. It, it's the fact that, um, that they lie to protect Scientology and that they think nothing of it. It's the fact that Scientology turns people into like emotionless wooden robots that, that, that don't care about anything other than Scientology. And they will actually say this is rubbish and that they'll say that I'm lying. But, um, well, hopefully one day they'll wake up and realize what's going on, you know? Just tell us again. I know we talked to you before. Your your own involvement with Scientology. How many how many how many years were you involved? Tell us, please. Okay, I got involved in 1987, and I was actually involved for seven years. So I was out in 1994, but I didn't wake up to the fact that I'd been hoodwinked until 2000 and well 2008 2009. So I held the mindset, if you like, for a further 14 years. So in effect, I was. Uh, mind controlled for 21 years by this organisation and the techniques that they use. Okay, and, and that's the message you're trying to get across to, to everybody else, that, that sort of mind control methods that you claim that they use? Oh yeah, I mean, my, my only concerns are the crimes of Scientology. Now, in France, uh, they've been convicted of extortion, coercion, spying, practising medicine without a licence, and that goes on in Ireland today. And if all that was to stop, I wouldn't have a problem. If all the abuses, if, if justices were righted, I wouldn't have any problem at all. If they want to believe Scientology, if they want to do Scientology courses, let them. But the abuses, the crimes have to be exposed and they have to be stopped. It's, it, it's completely wrong. OK. Are you attending the conference this weekend, Pete, can you tell us? Oh, I'll be there, all right, yeah. OK. Absolutely. Um... What sort of people I should do you think- mention that uh, if anybody wants to read up on the conference, they can look at xscientologistisland.org and there's a link on there to the live stream because we're going to be streaming it live as well. All right, OK. I, I, I'm just intrigued by how, how passionate you all are about this. Um, would it not be the case, you know, having gone through the, in your case, unfortunate experience and coming out the other side, to just move on with life and forget about it and... That's a, that's a valid point, Niall, and, and I, I would have to say, you know, on one level I do agree with you. Um, initially we, we were going to be showing a, a film at this conference, and unfortunately we didn't get it ready in time, and it, the, the title of that was Suspicious Deaths. There's something, almost like 600 people have lost their lives because of direct or indirect involvement with Scientology, and I think that's why we call the conference Enough is Enough. The fact that people have lost their lives over this that is why we're so passionate, because we want to draw a line under it and say, you know, it has to stop, and we want the authorities to take action, as they did in Russia last week when they raided them looking for evidence of fraud. So, yeah, we, we are passionate because we realise that there's something evil going on in society here that needs to be stopped. OK, and just before we finish, Pete, just, just a comment on Scientology in Ireland how strong uh, is the organisation in, in Ireland at the moment? I know you can't say too much because there are legal considerations, yes, but... Um, um, they, claim, they claim hundreds of members. The truth is they're, they're, they're probably a few dozen, if that. Uh, they may have a few new members got over the last uh, few years. I don't know, to be honest. Um, and anything they do say would probably be uh, a slant on the truth to be polite, you know, so it's hard to say how well they're doing in Ireland they're certainly behind on the rents that, that information's publicly available um, they claim that they're expanding like never before but there's no evidence for that Alright, okay Pete, thanks uh, for joining us, the conferences in, in Dublin this weekend, thanks uh, very much for, for taking the time to join us, Pete Griffiths there from Ballinan County